I'm gonna show you the way that I set up my accounts. I'm gonna show you my, not my actual bank, but my, my personal bank, bank account system, as well as my gambling bank account system, and show you how, how splitting your money around different, different places helps keep you organized and it helps keep you disciplined. So money management, um, I, I, I say this a lot and I don't mean, I don't, I don't mean to be pedantic about things, but I say all the time, this is the secret to gambling, right? And I've said that about understanding how to bet a variant. I've said that before about knowing your personality. I've said that before about a lot of things. I think bankroll is another one of those core features, the, one of the core tenets of really being solid as a gambler. And so this series that we're gonna start here, it's the first part of Gambling 201 is gonna be all about money management. And I mean all about money management. We're gonna get into all these topics. I just wanna give you kind of a, a top-down look at what I plan to talk with you about over the next couple of months. Nah, maybe, maybe two weeks, three weeks, whatever. Here's the things I wanna get into. I wanna talk about financial planning in general, and specifically with, with how it relates to gambling. Now, I know we've got a couple of people in our, in our live chats here that do financial planning as, a, as their job. I've got really good friends that, that are investment and wealth managers. That's a part of it, right? I'd like you to take some of the, the cornerstones of those things, and we're gonna apply those to our gambling budgets. And I say this a lot, right? We all say, oh, 10% is not enough. 20% is not enough. Well, guess what? 10% return in the real world is a great return. For some reason, we're never satisfied with that at a craps table or at a roulette table. But I think having this, this, this disciplined financial approach that, that a lot of financial planners bring, along with just a little bit of degeneracy to kind of push the needle a little bit, is where it's at for us, right? And I know when I... When I you know, invest with my with, with my investment person, we always may have the discussion, you probably do too, with your 401k. Do you wanna go conservative, medium, aggressive? All those ways to invest your money and you kind of split like 25% goes aggressive, 10% goes whatever, right? Same thing at the table. It's what we talked about in Gambling 101, right? Splitting your time and your money between conservative and aggressive plays is exactly how you play the financial markets. And we're applying that logic to the, to the casinos too, okay? Um, how you plan your sessions and your trip from a budgetary standpoint. We're gonna look at multiple bank accounts. I've talked to you before about having what's called a 401G account or an account you set up just for gambling. I'm gonna show you the way that I set up my accounts. I'm gonna show you my, not my actual bank, but my, my personal bank, bank account system, as well as my gambling bank account system, and show you how, how splitting your money around different, different places helps keep you organized and it helps keep you disciplined. It accounts for how we handle our expenses, our profits, and our losses. It actually puts money into differing funding sources. And when, when funding sources, I look at our bank accounts, I also look at ways to fill our, our bank accounts. And for example, when you're starting a, a trajectory in gambling, um, your 401g account will have $0 in it. There, you can't, right? You gotta, it's gotta come from somewhere. What's your side hustle that's putting money into your 401g account so that you can go out and gamble and grow the account? So we're gonna talk about funding sources as well, ways to kind of build your, your bankroll so that you can go out there and get and have some fun at the casinos and maybe win some, okay? We'll talk about managing money at the tables during sessions and during series of play at the table. We're gonna look at my craps rack management strategy again. I know that other people have their own rack management strategies. Joe does for sure, I know Victor does. We'll look at the way that other folks manage their racks. I think it's an important thing to look at that. We'll look at how I manage my stacks at a blackjack or at a roulette table to know where, I'm, where I am because it's different without an actual rack like you have in, in craps. Um, we'll look at calculating proper win goals and loss limits. And again, today's a good example. I'm gonna talk about the drawdown. What's the right win goal loss limit for with the bankroll that you've got? How do you manage that in a rack? How do you plan for that going to a session? We're gonna bring in some, some experts to talk about how comps really work at a casino, how the bosses really rate you, and to the point where, what is the computer that they do? What are they typing in? Like what information do they give the computer to let them know what your rating is so your comps can be calculated? Some casinos calculate it all with computer. Some casinos 
have it with a person still, a boss deciding what that is, right? We'll talk about some of that. I want to talk to you about um, taxes. It's been talked about here a lot. Um, what do you do with a big win? How do you handle a big win? Sometimes you can't avoid taxes. Hand pays on a slot machine, you can't avoid it. They're going to give you a piece of paper. Um, you win the, um, the fire bet and paperwork comes out. You can't help that, right? You're going to have to pay taxes on some of that stuff. But how do you handle bigger wins when it is just chips and cash? How do you do that, right? In fact, a big win to the table with all those chips, what do you do from a security standpoint, okay? And an option there might be looking at marker play. And I think there's a negative connotation to marker play. I think there's a positive way to look at marker play as well. So I'm going to explore all these things with you over the next, whatever this is, 18 to 20 days. We're going to spend about 20 minutes every day on one of these topics and kind of just break it down a little bit. And again, I'll share you with you what I've done that's worked for me, what I know to be quote unquote true, but I'm going to bring in people who have done this for a living to talk to us about some of these things and really get some experts in here to kind of add some flavor to it. And again, I can't answer tax questions, but I know somebody who can. I can't answer ratings questions, but I know somebody who can. I'm gonna bring those folks in. And that's gonna be the Gambling 201 series. Again, it's gonna take us about a month to get through it, four or, or 20 or so shows here, um, and 20 or so breakdown videos when we're done to get through it all. And I'm excited about it. This is a good one. Um, again, it won't be doing anything at our table, doing a lot of spreadsheet work, but I think it's important. And I know that some of you are gonna to say to me, ah, I already know all this stuff, John. Like I'm already, I've, I've been gambling for 30 years. I already, um, I already know it all. Why are you doing this? Well, here's the thing. Not everybody's been gambling for 30 years. There are people who are watching our show for the, that are brand new to this whole thing. And also you may have kids or grandkids that are getting into this world. Um, and as you know, if you have kids, they don't always listen to you, um, but they may listen to me. So these videos might be the kind of thing you want to send off to the younger generation. Say, hey, watch this foundational stuff. This is where it's going to be you know, important for you to start your, your career. I, I think, by the way, as, as a total aside here, um, what's very interesting is if you look at my, and I'll, I'll, I will share this one day, um, a total side note here. Look at my, my YouTube statistics. Um, the videos I put out, the Gambling 101 videos, are my worst videos. Like, they're good videos. I mean, quality quality wise, but you look at like John's how to play the iron cross video. It got 14,000 views last month. John's, are you a conservative gambler psychology series? Got 150 views. Like nobody wants to watch this stuff, but trust me, it's important to have out there. I think these are the most important videos I'm ever going to do getting all this basics out there. So, um, I would like to have it, um, spread. So let, let this be, uh, the thing that you kind of push out. All right. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Uh, please feel free to leave us a comment here in the, in the comment section for the video, but really better still, join us on Discord. Go to casinogaming.tv and hit the community link in the menu there and join our Discord. That's where me, other uh, YouTubers, and all of our uh, subscribers hang out. We sit there and talk strategy and just BS kind of all day long. It's a great way to get connected and stay connected and kind of interact with the team. Um, learn about meetups and, and get togethers and all that kind of stuff. So with all that said, again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate your time. God bless you. And I will see you in the next one.